So, everyone, welcome to uh, Kailul Kal Shira in partnership with uh, Breslov.org and uh, uh, Daily Sanity. Ashkaya, Ashkaya, the recordings in progress on Zoom. This is Gewaldik. Ashkaya, Chevra, for joining every time. And uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, the Tkufa that we're in right now. We're in a very special Tkufa. And what, what, is the, what is the Tkufa that we're in now? We're between uh, Tisha B'Av and Chamish Asa B'Av, right? It's a very, a very a unique, uh, um, it's a very, very unique time. And uh, let's discuss a few things about Tisha B'Av and let's discuss a few things about Chamish Asa B'Av. And the, the fact that it's Shabbos Nachamu and how does that tie in and all of this. So let's see now. So, the, so if you know if there's the, if you look in the last Mishnah, the material I'm giving you now, I looked, I saw it, looked at this up in the last Mishnah in Mesech the Tainus, okay? It's the last Mishnah. So the Mishnah goes over the, the uh, things that happened on, on, uh, on Tisha B'Av. And the Mishnah lists five things, five things that took place on Tisha B'Av. And the five things were, we know the first one was because the Miraglam came back on Tisha B'Av, right? And they delivered their, uh, their um, well, damaging report, okay? And then, unfortunately, we were crying, and HaKadosh Baruch said, if you're crying tears of vain, I'll, I'll give you something to cry about. All right, and then what was that? So the first base of Migdash was destroyed, specifically and burnt on the, the day of Tisha B'Av. Not only that, and that was the that was by the uh, by the Babylonians, okay, and that was in the year five eighty six B C E. That's when that took place, and then the second base of Migdash was also destroyed on Tisha B'av, and that was destroyed uh, was was destroyed seventy years after the Common Era. Okay, now the first second base of Migdash was destroyed by the Romans. Now it leads to the uh, leads to the uh, fourth thing that took place on Tisha B'av. So we know about sixty years, about sixty years after um, after the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, which was seventy which was seventy years after the Common Era. So we had we had the uh, Bar Kochva, and there was the Bar Kochva revolt, right? Bar Kochva was from the city of Beitar, right? He was from the city of Beitar. And um, he made a revolt, and the revolt was very successful. It was very successful. They called him Bar Kochva because he was like the, the star of Yaakov, you know? And it, 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 he, was, he was amazing. What he, what he was able to do, Ad Kidei Kach, that, that Rabbi Akiva, the great Rabbi Akiva, felt that possibly he was Mashiach. Rabbi Akiva felt that he was possibly Mashiach. But what happened on Tisha B'Av? On Tisha B'Av, the Romans surrounded the city of Betar. And we know that Rabbi Akiva was there at the time. Oy vey, 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 vey. And then what happened was they, they, they wound up getting into the city of Betar. They killed all the people. And they also killed on that day. Was, they, 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 they murdered Rabbi Akiva. They killed Bar Kochva, and Rabbi Akiva was murdered on that day. Oy, oy, fey, fey, fey. Oy, fey. Anyway, that was that was a that was another thing that took place. That was the fourth thing that took place on on Tisha B'av. and then the fifth thing that took place on Tisha B'av was that we had the see uh, uh, the Caesar. He was one of the Romans, right? The Caesar. Okay, and what did he do? He decided that Yerushalayim should be plowed. And there should be no no resemblance that people ever lived over there, and uh, he 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 wanted to make it like farmland, and and then they, they, you know the wolves would run around and all of that stuff and you know okay, you know and I, I looked into it as it's an amazing thing actually. Do you know that he actually lowered he actually lowered Harabayas by about a thousand feet, a thousand feet. It's fascinating because. Because it was Harabai, it's known as Harabayas. But if you think about it, when you see, if you, if, when you when you're in Yerushalayim, the the area of the of the of the what we have now that we have now the Kaisel Maravi that's flat, and the and the whole Harab, the, you know the the, the 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 what they call today the Temple Mount, which is Harabayas, right? 
So that that is a flat ground. It's not a mountain. It's not a mountain. And that's because that's because the this the sea he 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 flat. Now this also took place. This also took place on Tisha B'av. Anyway, what now, year was that? What, what year was that? Do you know? I, I I don't remember. I don't recall that year. I'm sorry, but that that was the the fifth thing that the Mishnah lists. So all these things the Mishnah lists. The Mishnah list. You can see. Look these things up if you'd like to see more about it. You could look it up in the. In, it's the last Mishnah Masech this Titus, and you'll find these things. And then the Mishnah goes on to say that that one of the greatest. The, the Mishnah records the, the two of the greatest days of the year. And it was recorded by Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel said that there were two, there were the two greatest days of the year were 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 Hamish Asa Ba'av and, and and Yom Kippur. These were the two greatest days of joy in the Jewish calendar. Says Rabbi Gamliel. Now, okay, we understand, and, and he says, what happened? What happened on on uh, what happened on Yom Kippur and Hamish Asa Ba'av? So two things happened. One thing, very, a very interesting thing happened, and that was that the, the girls, the girls would go, would go and, they would, and they would borrow dresses from one from the other. And no girl would wear her, her own dress. Every girl would borrow another dress. It, it even says that the, that the, uh, that the, that the, uh, the, uh, the Bas Melech, let's say the prince, the princess, she would borrow. She would borrow the dress from the daughter of the Kohen Gadol, and the Kohen Gadol's daughter would buy, would borrow would borrow the dress from the Skan Kohen Gadol. Okay, whatever. You know, this is what they were doing. And why did they do that? Because if anyone didn't have, you know, a, a, a dress, and they had to borrow it, no one felt no one felt embarrassed because everyone borrowed a dress. All the women went out and they borrowed the dresses. But it's a very interesting thing that's asked, and, and this was going on, this took place on Yom Kippur, this took place on, on, on Chamish Asabav, that's when it started. And, and a, a very interesting question is asked by the Kolbay. The Kolbay asks a question, and he says that, uh, you know, what was the, the significance? Was this really the nicest thing and the nicest way that the women would go around and, 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 and dance in a circle? And and the, the and the and the uh, you know the, the young men would, would pick the girl that they wanted and uh, and, and, and it, it's not it's not really the way of sneers, it's not really the nicest way to do things right, but he says the Kobay says that these were these women were the older women, and these were the older guys that that uh, weren't having hatzlocha and getting married. However, however. This was designed for them, and because of that, and these and these there were new there were new couples that were that were 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 uh, were, were, were matched together. So this, they were matched together. They were they, they found each other. However you want to put it on them. So that was a great great simcha because we know when every time any time that there's a chasna, a chasna is an, is an amazing amazing thing, right? When two people get together and they're going to bring and they're going to bring. Uh, you know, a Yiddish and a Shem is into the world, and they're going to build a, you know, a bay. We say you have to build a bias nem on the Israel, and we know that that the that the, that the, the, every Jewish home that's founded that's founded on on the on the on the right principles is actually considered is actually considered a Migdash Mat the same way a shul is considered a Migdash Mat a Yiddish Shtip, right? It's, it's considered a it's a very very special thing. Okay, so anyway, so these were the things to understand. Chamish Asabav, because you know, there's really nothing that we do. It's you know, oh, Yom Kippur, we have we have our Seder Avayd, we have a lot of things going on in Yom Kippur. Okay, we all understand that. But Chamish Asabav, there's really there's nothing to do. There's no there's no minute of any food that you can eat. Uh, there's no uh, you know there's no special tefillah uh, uh, that you you dab. No, it's it's just it's just a, a, a day. Oh, we won't say Tachlan. I guess a lot of people will be happy about that, right? Ulai, 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 vef. You know, the guys will be happy with that. So anyway, so listen. So that's a, some a little uh, understanding of 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 of, of uh, Tisha B'av, Chamisha and 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 just to see some of the things, just literally from the Mishnah. 
seeing the words of the Mishnah, and that's all we discussed now. We discussed the Mishnah, it's the last Mishnah in Tainus. If you want to see more, you can see more. I just wanted, to, I didn't want to take too much time for the Shia, but I thought that was something very interesting. And then I found a very interesting piece that I wanted to uh, uh, share with you today, and that's what we have up on the screen now. And this is a, a, it's one of my favorite Torahs actually in Lakute Halachas. It's in Hilchas uh, Birchas Hareach, okay? And uh, it, it, you'll see why, you'll see why in, in a moment. And let, let's get started and let's see how this is going to work out, okay? Ubi Kashtem, the Pasuk says, Ubi Kashtem, Isham, Es Hashem, Alekecha, Matzasa, Im Yia Nidacha, and so if, if you'll, you'll search for HaKadosh Baruch Hu over there, you'll find HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If the person was pushed off, so they'll come back. So the Isa B'Kis Arizal, it's brought in the Holy Ari. It was last week, it was the, the yard side of the Holy Arizal, right? And he tells you where it is, in Priya Yitzchayim and Shar, Kuvshin and Pei Gimel, okay, B'Kavonos, B'Avieinu L'Sholem, Yabakan Fris Oretz. So, so, the, so the Arizal is discussing over there of this concept of that we say every day in the in the in the Kriya. We say in in, a, in, in the Hava Rabba Hava Soilam that we say before Krishna. We say we say these words. We all know these words. We have the Einu L'Sholem. We have a Kanfei Soharetz. Right? Then we take the tzitzis in our in our hands. Right? Right? So, so when a Kaddish Baruch Hu is going to bring us. In peace from the four corners of the earth. And he says like this. Any time there's a Jew that's that's uh, that's uh, pushed away, that Jew that feels left out, and he's pushed away somewhere miyaba kanfoy sarts on the four corners of the earth. It's as if all of Kla Yisrael is mamish in exile with this person. And through that, you'll, they'll, be, they'll be able to clarify the Netzaitzes, the sparks of Kedusha that are there. And through that, they'll, be, they'll, they'll come back to Eretz Yisrael. Now, these are the words. These these are the words of the Arizal. These are the does words of the include, what? Does this, does this include those who are spiritually dispersed? Yes. Yes. In other words, the, you know the people just uh, they just yes. Don't yeah, you're gonna see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabbi Yaakov, you're, Rabbi Yaakov, you're on. You're you you you're perfect. You'll see in a moment. Yes, you're <laughs> you're thinking. Wow, you you you're you're on the money today, Rabbi Yaakov. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, but watch this now. Okay. So Ayin Sham Baricha. So, so Reb Nassim is just—he's paraphrasing these words from the Arizal. And if you want to see more about it, he told you where we could look that up. Okay. But now we're going to see Reb Nassim is going to try to explain it. See, let's understand the question here. So the guy was pushed off. So the guy is pushed off on the four corners of the earth, and through that he'll wind up coming back. He'll wind up coming back to Eretz Yisrael. So Rav Nassim's trying to understand this. Like, how is that going to work? And that's the reason why that the Jewish people, in many cases, many, 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 many times, Jews are scattered in the, in, in the most remote places. And sometimes, perhaps, some of these remote places uh, is is void from kedusha? Does it? You don't find, you you don't sense any kedusha in these places. They're they're, they're so they're so uh, secular. They're so uh, you know you know so, so so involved in 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 teva. You don't see it. This is a very very hidden and 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 concealed. This is very very concealed. This idea of How can I understand this? Ram Nas is going to explain the question. Because we see that whenever you have countries or, or, or places, let's say you have, you have uh, uh, this, let's say states in the United States, right? You have places that are, that are, that are, that are, that are far away from any kind of Yishuv Yisrael, from any kind of Jewish neighborhood, right? Kamai, Bimedina is Moscow, 
as he's using the idea over here of Russia, someone is in Moscow. Okay, today there's this Yiddish kind of Moscow. You have to understand when Rav Nassim was writing this uh, uh, over 200 years ago. So, so uh, at that time, Moscow was the headquarters for the Haskalah. There were no religious Jews living in Moscow. The aristocrats lived in Moscow, and there were no, there were no, there were no, uh, you know, uh, there was no, there was no signs of Yiddishkeit. Today you can go to Moscow and you can find shuls and mikvahs and, and yeshivas, and you can find, you know, uh, you know, anything kosher food, and you can find anything you want over there. I don't know how long it's going to last, but that's what it is right now. But anyway, so now, nitku l'sham yehudim muatim, and they were pushed away over there. A, a few Jews, not too many. Vidoram bein har be'akum. And they were dwelling amongst many, many Goyim. There were very few Jews and many, many Goyim. Yehudim mesu ma'at. Right? They, 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 <laughs> it's hard to translate that. Ad she'yesh ayorois ha'rechaikim yoyse she'einim so'im sham Yisraelim. Until there were certain cities that you wouldn't even find a Jew in the city. Maybe you'll find one Jew, two, in a very, very, very big city. And I mean, these things exist today. There are, there are places people can go to remote places, and they, 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 they will have trouble finding a Jew over there. So we can understand that. So, but we see by, and we know, that most of the Jews living in these types of places, Rubam Kikulam Einem Tzadikim Klal. These are not, uh, you know, your most righteous and pious uh, Jews, uh, learned Jews uh, that that are there. Uh, you know, we're not talking about, you know, the, the you know, maybe there's a there's a Chabad Shliach over there. We're not talking about him. We're talking about the people he's trying to work with. Okay, we're not talking about those guys, right? The guys that are going there to find these two, one or two people. So they, those guys are Kodesh Kedoshim. They're going there. But we're not, to, we're talking here that in those, in these places, you'll find many, many Goyim and very few Jews. And most of them, Heim Rechaikim Yoid Ma'ashem Yisbarach. It is, it is, oh, Einam Tzadik Kla. Ba'alavai Hoyu Be'enenim. Halavai, they would be, they would be Be'enenim. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be Tzadikim, okay. But maybe they would be Be'enenim, they would be something. Uh, you know, but but he's but, but so the Rebbe, but the Rebbe says, but look what the Rebbe says over here. Well, means what? In, in, in between, in between, Benini means in between. They're not a tzaddik. They're not a rasha. They're in between. They're, they're they're the middle of the road. Middle of the road. Kiem rechaykim miyoyed me Hashem yizbarach because they're very very distant from Hashem. Viyevshe laharich bazeh. The Rebbe Reb Nassan say, I can't talk to you so much about this because it pained Reb Nassan. Because Reb Nassim loved every Jew, and Reb Nassim wanted to find something beautiful in every Jew. So that's why he's having trouble even writing something like this. Because I'm not going to speak on, on, any, on any Jew. I'm not going to, Reb Nassim says, it's hard for me to say, I'm just trying to help you understand this whole idea is to try to help us understand what the Arizal was talking about, that the fact that the Jews will be exiled to, and, and scattered around the world, that'll bring them back to Eretz Yisrael. So Rav Nassim is trying to, to build up the case to help us understand it. He says, now look, Higam Paishei Yisrael, Malaya Mitzvah's Karimai. Rav Nassim, like we learned this, we learned this in Lukute Alochis when we started in Hashkamas HaBaiker, that even, even the, 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 the Rishayim, if you would find the Paishei Yisrael, a Jewish heretic, right? So those people are also filled with mitzvahs can remind them. They're, they're, they have mitzvahs in the same way. If you open up a, 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 a pomegranate, how many seeds? There's so many, so many seeds in there. So too are these Jews that are even Peshaya Yisrael, how many mitzvahs they have in them. It's one, unbelievable. How can I understand this? That through these type of people, that again are not your 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 shoyma shabbos. These are people that are not necessarily putting on tefillin. These are people not necessarily eating kosher food. So how is it? So Reb Nassim trying to understand this. So Reb so the said. That the klipas, these 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 nitzaitzes, these these holy sparks, will be elevated by them from the depths of the husks of impurity. 
Caleb, but how is that going to be possible? If these people are not people, they're learned, they don't make brachas, they don't know how to daven, or they don't want to daven, whatever the case may be, so how are they going to do that? But these, this idea, this concept, is something so wonderful that it's really impossible Lahavin, to understand this. Vakla, and he's going to explain you the kla. The main goal is when a person is distant from Eretz so she klala kedusha, because like the Gemara says, Eretz Yisrael is kailal all the kedusha of the world. Vikra Golis and the main Golis will be Shri Levara and Nidachim. And the main point the Golis is in order to, to clarify Levara, to clarify the Nidachim, those that were pushed away. Shehem and Etzaitzai, Shenitchu, Bumke, Eklipas. And these are the Etzaitzais. These are the Etzaitzais that when Akadish Baruch Hu was making the, when, when Akadish Baruch Hu was creating the world. So the Zaya says that Akadish Baruch Hu made worlds and he destroyed worlds. And then when he destroyed the worlds, that was called the Shviris HaKalim. Okay, the Shri Vesakalim. And when he did that, so there were there were there were there were there were uh so to say shards, uh sparks of imp- uh, of purity that got that got scattered into the world, and these sparks of purity that were scattered into the world, right, they have to be clarified, right? They have to be lifted up. So, the, so he says in the Tzitz is nitchu b'umke klipes b'uchinus legol yisrael bein ha'ayv dekecham ella kedeshi is vasu aleim geirim. So the Gemara in Pesachim says it's a famous Gemara. We all, I'm sure, we all learned it on Pei Zayin on the days that the, the Gemara says that why were we all sent into why were we sent into uh, 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 Golis? Why were we sent out? In, uh, amongst the nations of the world in order that we should we should make more geirim. In order that we should make Gerim. That's what the Gemara says. In other words, we'll live amongst the Gentiles and we'll be, you know, a, a, a nice, a nice, kind people and we'll do the right thing for people and we'll always, and we'll take care of people and we're, we're compassionate. So the Goyim will see that and they'll feel, wow, this is such a special, these are such special people. I want to join them. And we know that we have, there's a lot of Gerim in Kla Yisrael today, Baruch Hashem. And, 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 and it's an amazing thing. And a lot of them do join Klai Yisrael because they, 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 they have experiences with Jews and they make a Kiddush Hashem and, and that helps them. Shezel Bechinas at Snoitzitzus HaMevorim Mayum Klipas. And that's the idea of the Nitzitzis that are clarified Mayum Klipas. These sparks, when the Jews are elevated, when they go and they when they when they interact with Gentiles and Gentiles become Jews, so that helps to clarify these sparks. Okay, because really it's very hard for us to understand this idea of Golas of exile. We know because we didn't do the right thing, right? Right? That's what 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 was Moshe Rabbeinu telling us last week in Parshas Devar? Kindle, look, if you're not going to do the right thing, and they, you know you're going to come into the into the land of Eretz Yisrael, and then you know the guys that first come in, they, 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 you know they, they, those are the Olam Chad, they, those are the those are the people that made the Aliyah, the, the Aliyah, they're 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 chadosh, they're they're fresh, they're nice, but then the second generation, the third generation won't feel that excitement, and they'll they'll come to sin and they'll come to do the wrong thing. So we were in Eretz Yisrael. Golo Yisam Yisham Eretz Amim. We were in Eretz Yisrael. So those were, again, the Arizal said that we were, we were we were scattered out throughout. We were scattered out throughout the world in order to be brought back to lift up the sparks in order to be brought back to Eretz Yisrael. So we're not the same, but Mamanusha, we were in Eretz Yisrael and we got sent out. So we got sent out. How are we going to come back? And then all the Jewish people will come back, uh, of course. I'm not saying this is very, very complicated. How is it possible that the Jews from Chutz Laaretz, they're actually going to come back to Israel? Because 
And if 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 the if the whole idea of Eretz Yisrael is the is the kedusha of Eretz Yisrael, the holiness of Eretz Yisrael, right? Shisham ikke kedusha Yisrael. That's the main sanctity of the Jewish people. Im sham is gaber al Yisrael leyitzar ad shehechetiyah. If the Jews were in Eretz Yisrael and the Yitzar was so strong that caused them to do Avaidazara and all the different things that they did wrong, the Shri Chesdam, right? The three the three cardinal sins, right? Gili Araya, Shri Chesdamim, right? And Avaidazara. Eich yiyah tikva shevachutz l'aretz. So Mamanosh, like, how do we understand this? If if the Jews were in Eretz Yisrael and the Yitzar was so strong, Again, he's trying to reiterate the question of to understand, to help us understand this, right? So if that was the case, so how is it possible that now we're in Eretz, it's a thick of a to Eretz Amin, that's the nation, the, the, the land of the nations of the world. Avira Tome, right? The Gemara says that the Avi, the air, the air in, 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 in Chutzlaretz is Tome. Not that we're saying that there's, there's <laughs> it's a, a spiritual pollution. There's a spiritual pollution. It's not a... <coughs> excuse me. Right. We're not talking about a, a physical uh, a physical uh, a pollution, okay? This is a spiritual one. Shesham yitakne sheyashul Yisrael v'imkein chas v'shalom efes tikva. So I'm not saying... So if that's the case, so it seems like there's no hope. But we know, Hashem doesn't want to take the karma on us for what we did wrong. The whole idea we go out and Hashem put us in the gullus and the tsaris that we have. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't cause us our pain and our problems because he's trying to take the come on us. They go, you did this wrong, I'm going to do this to you. That's not what the Rabbi Yishlam does. <coughs> the Rabbi Yishlam does everything for us. Is Bishvil, <coughs> excuse me, Bishvil Tikkun. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants Tikkun. Hashem wants to, to have repair in the world, commercial cost, we cash them, we show them, it's a shem like a chum, it's also. How comes one request if they come back and he'll find you? Aval ech ye tochen ze be et sherev et so loy be cash nu be ve chi pas nu ve dosh ve dosh nu es a shem like a chum, be chutz loritz, be chutz loritz, be eretz amen nidrash nevakesh oisen. So if a college broker wasn't searching for us, and, 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 and so to say, looking for our, our, our out for our good, we were in Eretz Yisrael. So how is it going to happen when we're outside of Eretz Yisrael? These are the wonders of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. These are from the, the, the deepest, deepest secrets. These are from the deepest, deepest secrets. We know that every time a Jew has any kind of yerida, any time he falls down. Well, um, right. According to every single Jew, according to the aspect of where he's holding. Until some people they fell to the to the to the to the depths to the depths of 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 of, of, of uh, doom. It seems to them that there's no hope there. Befran Achshav is specifically now, and again, Rav Nassim's writing that two hundred years ago. The Seifa Golas Ha'Achris Ha'Yomim Ha'Ela Beikvus of the Meshichai. This is where Rav Nassim was writing two hundred years ago, right? Now, that, that, that the, the situation with the Haskalah, the situation with the you know the Enlightened Movement that was that was that was running rampant, that was running rampant at that time. Right, Bukvus of the Mashiach, Gashe Yadei Kol Echas Echad Benafshe Nigoya Levavo Yamachav. Each one knows what's paining their hearts and their pains that they have. Havaf Bichain Seif Kol Seif Kulam Yistaknu. At the end, everything will be repaired. V'lo Yir Nevet Shum Or Echad Nehem. Not even one will be pushed away from there. Everyone will be brought back. Hakadosh Baruch has a plan for every single Yiddish in the Shama. Ki Hashem Yisbar Chayishe Machshol. 
Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu has the most amazing thoughts. And he, has, he understands and he does things. He pushes a person, but not that he should stay pushed off. Hashem pushes it away, but we have to come back. We have to understand that Hashem doesn't want us pushed away. He wants us to come back. There he can find the Yisraeli. So let me explain to you the rest of the Torah that it, 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 it was cut short over here. So Rav Nassim explains, he goes on to tell us like this. So what happens is, and that's why it's in, I'm going to explain to you why it's in Hilchas Birchas Areach, right? Hilchas Birchas Areach is every time you make a, you make a brach on things that you smell, right? We have Bairi Mine Besamen, Bairi Atze Besamen, right? We have the different brachas of things that we smell, okay? So he, he goes on to explain further there that why is it in, this, in Hilchas Birchas Areach? Because when a Jew, we're talking about a Jew that's far away, and he comes to a place that's not ha- inhabited by many Jews. And now this guy finds himself in this place. He finds himself in a very remote place. When he walks around there, this Nitzayt of, of Kedusha smells the Neshama of the Yid. And the Nitzayt, the nitzayt is, 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 is enlivened. The Nitzayt becomes alive again because it smells, it's mereach, it smells the, the Yiddish and the Shama. So you would think this is a great thing, right? So what happens is, so this Jew goes by wherever this Nitzitz is, and this Nitzitz attaches itself to the Jew. Wow, great, isn't that great? Well, wait a second. But that Nitzitz was there for 5,782 years, right? That Nitzitz has been there for quite some time now. And there's a lot of schmutz that got put on this nitzitz that land on top. So when this nitzitz attaches itself to the Jew, it comes with a lot of garbage that comes onto him also. So if that's the case, how is that ever going to help the Jew? So Rav Nassim says like this, Adarab, now that he has all this schmutz that was attached to him, it'll probably cause him to sin even more. Whatever he was doing wrong, maybe he'll sin even more. So then he'll ask you the question again. So how can it be that if he was scattered away, it'll bring him back to Eretz Yisrael? If before he didn't have it, and now he has a worse problem, how's it going to be? So Rav Nassim says like this. When that Nitzayit attaches it to, to him, and every time now he does an Avera, right? He does another Avera. He smashes the Nitzayit. He smashes it. And then he does another Avera and he smashes it again. And he bangs it again, and he bangs it again, and he, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until it becomes so finite, it becomes so small, that Nitzayit becomes so small that even his neshama on his level can, 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 can ingest it. His neshama can accept that Nitzayit Kedusha because it was broke so many times. It now can accept it. And when it does accept it, that's when the Jew starts to think, Oi, what am I doing with my life? It wakes him up. It wakes him up. And he starts to think, Oi, what am I doing with my life? How can it be I'm wasting my life? And he starts to look. And that's how you, can, you, you should know that in Eretz Yisrael, you know, we have the, 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 pro, the, the, the place called Eish Torah. And if you if you you can go online and see their stories, I mean, the stories, this Torah, Mamish is coming alive today more than ever. This Torah is coming alive. There are Jews from the most remote places of the world that just all of a sudden have a, a chuka. They have a desire. They have a yearning to, 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 to find out about Yiddishkeit. So what do they do? They go on their computer, they type in, you know, uh, uh, Judaism, the ba 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 and what comes up? Asha Torah. And how many, how many Yidden come from all over the world, literally from every country, from every walk of life, from every background, and you can find them in the base Medrash of Eishat Torah. It's unbelievable. This is coming true right now. So that's what it meant. This is what Rav Nassim says is what Rav Nassim, with, 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 with what uh, um, the Arizal meant. When the Arizal said that by the fact that the Jews will be sp- scattered around the world. Via them being scattered around the world, it'll cause the elevation of the sparks, and that'll bring them back to Eretz Yisrael. 
So Reb Nassim went through the whole idea. But how could it be we were in Eretz Yisrael and it didn't work out? The Yitzhak was strong and it pushed us away. So how could it be if now we're, we're be, be na am and we're going to be brought back? So now we understand it. Because it's so remote and that Nitzayt was there for so long. And that Nitzayt had no involvement with any Jew from the time of the creation of the world. But now this Yidl, he comes over there. And now that Yidla gets attached, this spark is attached to this Yidla. And when that spark is attached to this Yidla, what happens is all the schmutz is attached to him also. He causes him to keep doing things wrong, more things wrong, more things wrong. So you think you get pushed away further. Yes, he's getting pushed away further, but now he has that spark in the Tzayt Kedusha attached to him. So when he does that, he keeps breaking that spark until he can ingest it. And that's what it meant. This is what Abnasan explained us so beautifully what it meant why the Arizal wrote in pre and pre Eitzachayim in Shakush, in, in Pei Gimel, like we said, why he wrote these, this idea. And it's, it's a Pelopleus, Mamish, this, I, the whole concept of how we were pushed away and then we can come back. And we have to always and no believe that whatever, we, whatever situation a Jew finds himself in, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a plan. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a plan. It doesn't matter how far we are, where we were pushed away. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a plan for the Jew. And that's what we really have to know. And that's what I believe this Torah is teaching us the most. That it doesn't matter what it seems like on the surface. Really HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows every single Yid. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want anyone to be pushed off. Even if it seems like he's pushed off, he can always come back and he will come back. Does anyone have any so, questions? Yeah, go yes. ahead. Yes, Ernie, yes. please. So let me just ask you something. These like second generation Jews, yes. who miss sins, are we saying that they actually leave it was just wrong. Are we saying that, that, that they leave? No, 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 they didn't. No, no, the Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't saying that they're going to leave. No, but rather, rather they're not going to follow the Torah. And because they don't follow the Torah, Eretz Yisrael, they're going to be expelled from Eretz Yisrael. They'll be thrown mean, out. Wait, 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 no, no, we know, no, Ernie, we know that a Jew is a, a, even, we even know if, if any of a Jew ever sins, he's still called Yisrael. He, he never, you can't, you can't not be Jewish. You were born a year, you're always a year. These people actually leave the country. They did, they were, no, they were exiled. They were forced to leave. They were exiled, so they they, yeah, but yes, they, they were forced to leave, of they course. Were, they were forced to leave. Sure, when and the Babylon when the Babylonians back. came, like we discussed in the beginning oh. of this year, when they oh. came in over there, they, they, they caused the destruction and they, they, they pushed us out of here. And what do you think what the Romans did? And the died, and then the, the Greeks, oh, yeah, yeah, we had <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. Oh. But uh, but this, don't worry, this Yesh Tikva, Kaddish Baruch Hu is, is, is bringing the world always closer and closer to its final harmony, and, and we're going to see it very soon, any day now, Mitzvah Hashem.